Okay, so in this video, we're going to see how to linearize a power equation. How can we fit certain data into power equation, all right? So this is a type of a power equation, y equals to a2xb2. So if we do linearization on this nonlinear power equation, we get the second equation, log y equals to log a2 plus b2 log x by taking base 10 logarithm at both sides. So this is just simply log y and this is just simply log a2 and b2 log x is from here. I'm not going to show you how we got x uh, to the power of b2 into b2 log x. This is a uh, mathematic basic so you should know this already. All right, then a plot of log y. So this is your y-intercept versus log x. Sorry, not y-intercept. Y exists and this is x exists. Will yield a straight line with slope of b2. So this is your slope or gradient, which is the m. And intercept of log a2. So this is your y-intercept, which is your c. Okay, let's look at an example here. Fit equation to the data using a log transformation of the data. So this is the, this uh, given here is the power equation and also given is the linearization of this power equation. So what you need to do is you need to work out what is the value of A and B. How to do that? You need to solve this. You need to calculate the intercept and also calculate the slope using the previously formula that I showed you um, in the previous video, the linear regression. Okay, we use the same formula of intercept and the slope. So given here the x and y data, um, not so many data here, only five data. So you need to come up with a new table and you need to add more columns here, all right? in order to, for you to calculate the slope and the intercept. So this is the new x and this is the new y. So new, this is your, your graph, sort of like, so this is log x, this is your log y. So how do you get zero here? It's just log one. Log one, you will get zero. Log two, get 0 0.301 log 3 you will get 0 0.477 and so on and so on this is the summation or the total of everything and this is just simply x uh, squared all right and this is just simply x times y okay so here uh, for the log x squared is 0 squared 0 0 0.301 squared, 0 0.090601, and so on and so on. So you need to identify your n. N is total number of data. We have five data. And these are the items that you need to calculate in order for you to calculate the slope. And then you can calculate the intercept. So let's look at the next slide. So this is the formula to calculate the slope. This formula is not new. We actually use the same formula as you learned before to calculate the slope. So this is like n, the summation of x times y minus the summation of x, summation of y divided by n, the summation of x squared minus the summation of x and then squared. Okay, this is not new to you. So what you have to do is just substitute all the values that you have calculated into this slope equation and you will get the slope as 1.75. And then for the intercept, so what you have to do is uh, you just substitute into this formula. Okay, log A equals to log Y minus B log X. So just substitute all these values inside. And you will get your intercept, which is negative 0 0.3. So for the straight line, so now you can substitute your log A and B into this linear equation. So you will end up with this one. And as you know that the power equation is actually y equals to AXB. So now the problem is you need to solve what is the A and what is B. 
So in this case, B is already solved. B is 1.75. Okay, B is already solved. You need to solve for A. So log A equals to negative 0 0.3. So it's easy for you to calculate the A. Just find the anti-log and you will get A equals to 0 0.5. And once you got all these values, you can substitute it in back into the power equation. So y equals to axb equals to a here is 0 0.5 and then b here is 1.75. So there you go. You got your power equation using the data in the table. It's as easy as A, B, C. All right, next, I'm going to talk about saturation growth rate equation. So this is very famous in chemical engineering or bioprocess engineering or biochemical engineering. So you will be seeing a lot of this equation um, throughout your journey as a chemical engineer. Okay. So, this is the saturation growth rate equation. Y equals to A and then in the bracket X uh, over B plus X. And this is the linearized version of the above equation. 1 over Y equals to B over A, 1 over X plus 1A. So, in this case, a plot of 1 over Y versus 1 over X will yield a straight line with a slope of B over A and intercept of 1 over A. So this is the intercept. And this is the slope. So your graph should be 1 over X and 1 over Y as the Y axis. Let's look at an example here. This is given the linear, uh, the saturation growth rate equation and its linear version. And they ask you to find what is the growth rate equation for this data. So what you have to do, again, you need to come up with a new table with a new set of X and Y values, a new one. So this is your table. This is the original data. And then you need to have your new X and your new y so your new x will be 1 over x and your new y will be 1 over y so this is just simply 1 over 0 0.75 you will get this 1 over 0 0.8 you will get this this is 1 over 4 you will get 0.25 1 over 1.6 you will get 0 0.625 and so on and so on again you need this two extra columns to calculate for your slope and also you need to calculate your average value uh, in order for you to calculate the intercept so let's move on to the next page so for this one they are calculating the slope this is again just the slope equation just the previous slope equation and all you have to do is substitute all the values that you have calculated just now and you will get your slope as 0 0.5935. And now it's time to calculate the intercept. So just substitute again all these values. Okay, this is the slope. It's the same. And you will get the intercept as 0 0.4990. So you substitute back your intercept and your slope into the linear saturation growth rate equation the linearized one and you will come up with this equation so to answer the question which asks you to come up with the saturation growth rate equation for the data you need to calculate what is your a and what is your b so in this case you know 1 over a this is from your uh, intercept all right 1 over a is 0 0.4990 so here a you know it is 2 and then you can solve for b so this is from the slope b over a and now that you know b which is 2 you can substitute sorry now you know a which is 2 you can work out what is the value of b so b you will get 1.187 and then 
you can substitute back this A and B values into this saturation growth rate. So you will reach to this equation and this will be your final answer. All right, so let's look at um, the last segment for the regression, which what we call as polynomial regression. So um, in this in this part, we are trying to fit a second order polynomial. This is a second order polynomial. All right. So in this case, we would like to find what is a naught, what is a one, and what is a two. Okay, given a set of uh, data. So let's say you are given a set of data here, x and y. Okay, you need to come up with these three linear equations here. So the first one here is for a naught, which is uh, n, n times a naught. n is the number of data plus the summation of xi for a1 and the summation of xi squared for a2. And equals to the summation of y. So where does this x, x, and y comes from? It comes from all this data. And for the second linear equation, we have summation of x for a0, summation of x squared for a1, summation of x uh, to the power of 3 uh, for a2, and then sum equals to summation of x, y. And... Uh, for the third equation is as follows. So then we can transfer these linear equations into a matrix form like this. All right. So just like the previous chapter. So let's look at this table here. So these two data are given to you, original X and original Y. Since you need to fit a second order polynomial to the data, in the table below, meaning you need to come up with this equation, sorry, with this second order polynomial or quadratic equation, you need to come up with this using polynomial regression method. So then all you know is you need to calculate the summation of x squared, the summation of x to the power of 3, the summation of x to the power of 4, and you need to calculate this, this one, of course, this, and this. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 things you need to calculate. So, you need to add more columns for x squared, x to the power of 3, x to the power of 4, x times y, and x squared, y. And all you need is this total here. You have 7. So, you have all these values, all right? So M, what is M? It means the order of the equation. So this is second order. So N is the number of data, which is 6. And the rest are taken from the table. So you substitute all these values back into this matrix form. And then you will arrive to this matrix with all the values given. And then solving this equation through a technique such as Gauss elimination, which have which you have learned before. So this will give you all the values for A0, A1, and A2. Sorry, this is not A3. This is A2. I think this is also wrong here. This is not A3. This is A2. Okay. And when you get all this value, so you can... Um, substitute these values into this least squares quadratic equation uh, for the polynomial equation, which is y equals to 2.47857 plus so on and so on. So this is your best fit of the quadratic equation.